This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. All right, let's go down to the Bahamas, somewhere our friend Matt Zimmerman is now with us. Coach, what happened with the uh, the flight delay earlier this week on Monday? What were you guys having to go through with? Oh, yeah, that kind of started us off. But you know what? It was good. We were leaving early on Monday. We don't play till Wednesday night, so it was good. You kind of build that in in basketball. You know, it's funny. You travel with football. There's hardly any delays. The weather's nicer. You kind of have a plane that's your plane, period. And we did have one flight delay in football this year. I think that's the first one in five years I've been a part of. They're, they're always on time. But in basketball, you get into weather, and there's everyone chartering all these teams, and especially these like a Thanksgiving week, you got everybody chartering. And women's basketball teams are chartering, and volleyball charters now. There's, there's just literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of planes needed. And when they get behind, you're behind. And, we found out we were, I was going to leave the house Monday at eight o'clock, and then it's then they said, "Hey, for an hour and a half delay, and you wait, and then it's another delay." I ended up just going to the office, so we left about five hours late. But uh, I know it's been kind of been made a big deal. I thought it wasn't really that big of a deal. We still got here Monday night, and so instead of getting here, you know, earlier in the afternoon, we we got here six or seven o'clock, and you know, we still got here like forty eight hours before tip off. So. I think that's why you yeah. try to leave early to build in in case you have any problems like that. Just have that built in. Dude, that's five hours of pool and beach time that was missed out on. What are you talking about? It's not a big deal. Well, that's true, Tommy. And, and Coach, uh, <laughs> you know, as you can imagine, Coach doesn't take those delays. Well, he, yeah, he doesn't take them very good. No, I don't imagine. <laughs> no, no, he's not He's not, uh, He's not. not real happy about that stuff. It's really it's out of your hands. It was not funny, but it started the day before with that charter and it was coming out of the Bahamas. I think there was a there was a couple of women's tournaments here, and I think it was Kansas State women. And they they were delayed getting out, and it was several hours for uh, I think maintenance issues. And then Monday there was some bad weather going through, and uh, so we had a we had a combo of maintenance, and then getting there getting the yeah. flight crew because uh, the flight crew timed out because of the delays, and so you know the FAA's got all these flight crew crew hour rules. That hit us, and then there was weather, so it was just a combo. But it ended up being five hours. Yeah. We're good. It's a it's a beautiful place. It's nice. I haven't seen a ton, but uh, you know, got out yesterday and, and, and got in a good walk, and it, it's just beautiful. It's in the eighties. It's really nice. And you got eight teams walking around the same hotel. Yeah. So you know, we're all eyeing each other. We're looking at each other <laughs> since uh, Monday night. Everybody's looking at each other. You know, and I had a conversation yesterday with Javon Quinterly who's in Memphis, and we've played him about eight times, it seems like, at uh, Alabama. And I, I said, hey, you know, we're, not, we're not playing you no more. It's going to be weird playing Alabama and not playing Javon Quinterly. And he smiled, and he said, well, we might still play here. And I said, yeah, we might. And then he said, well, I don't have to come to Fayetteville this year. So it's uh, it, it's all good. You've seen some of these kids you've seen for a while, but it's going to be an awesome tournament. Yeah, great Great field, North Carolina, Villanova, Michigan, and Memphis. You'll play the winner of that. Arkansas and Stanford yeah. in the late game tonight. Northern Iowa's there, Texas Tech. So some some big brand names. Tell us about Stanford. Uh, that's Arkansas's opponent tonight. That's uh, going to be a game at 630 that I think a lot of fans around our state will settle in in front of a, a game on real TV for the first time on a holiday right. week. And I think a lot of people are going to be watching and listening to, the, listening to the Razorbacks tonight. Absolutely. You know, and even Friday in the loss to Greensboro, you know, a lot of people have still going to high school football and it's SEC Network Plus. Uh, probably half of our fan base has got that figured out and probably the half don't. So you're, you're right. It's going to be the first time people are really going to get to study this team as much. And they're pretty good. I talked to Jared House yesterday. He's the head coach at Stanford. Uh, he was an old Roy Williams assistant. He grew up in California. I've known him for years and he was head coach at UAB at one time, and I'd coached at UAB, not with him, but just knew Jared, and he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very good coach. And, you know, he's, he's, he likes his team, but he's also worried that they have not been very good in, in the last few years, and he's a good coach. He's just trying to get them back there. He's got some young guys that he you know, feels good about, but they, they stubbed their toe. You know, they lost a home game, but they got smacked pretty good by Santa Clara. And so I think that showed him that, hey, we got, we got a whole lot of work to do. And for them, their work has got to be on the defensive end. They got some guys that can score a little bit. 
but they struggle on defense, and that, and that's what he told me. One of their assistants, Robbie and Saul, I've known Rob too. He was the head coach of UAB also after Jared Haas left, and uh, he, he said the same thing. He said, "Man, we just our defense has been a struggle." So I think if you're Arkansas, you got to really be in attack mode against Stanford, and you got to be we got to be on the drive or on cuts to the basket, or throwing the ball to cutters. We can always kick it out and maybe get an open three. I thought, I thought against Greensboro when we went four for 23, a lot of them were off the dribble, and a lot of them were just passing around the perimeter three. We'll, we'll make some of those, too. But we just seem to be better off when we got guys attacking and driving it, and Devo and L and Tremont attacking, and then they can kick it to their open teammate. I think a pass coming from that direction helps them. But, uh, you know, they got a 7-1 guy. They got this guy, Renard, number 42, He's from Paris, and he's he's a big, strong kid. They say he majors in mathematics, and I was like, wow. And they said, oh yeah, he's a, he is a sharp guy, and he is a big dude. And so that's a guy I know coaches put some emphasis on in the scouting report. And you can imagine the scout. It's been very detailed because we lost on Friday night, so coach practiced on Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning before we left, you know, and then yesterday we got. We got about an hour on the court, guys, and then we went to this other little ballroom and got about another hour, and it, it was pretty detailed. Here's one for you. You remember Peja Stoyakovich, who was a good player oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. in the NBA for a long time. His son, you guys have probably talked about this uh, on the air, but he's a, he grew up in California. Of course, his dad played in the NBA a long time, and uh, he'll be wearing number two, and he's a true freshman, and he's a scorer. Now, they, they don't even write his defense. I think you know he's one of those guys that's had a little trouble adjusting to keeping guys in front of him. And so, but he's a good player. I mean, he's, he's like his dad. He's, he's a big, he's a little different player than his dad, but he's, he's big like that, six seven. They got a little guard, Jared Bynum. He's about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, It'll be interesting to watch him go against the older Arkansas big, you know, we got big athletic guards. And he's a really small guard. He's a Maryland kid, was at Providence. Hey, he majors in policy, organization, and leadership studies. The same thing Ty Richardson did not major in in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, Ty is not big on policy, organization, and leadership studies. You know, they got a bunch of these guys majoring in computer science. So, I mean, it's, it's Stanford, you know, and it's it, it's really interesting. I was, when I was talking to Rob, their assistant, yesterday, he was like, man, it's the real. I said, is it that hard, really? He said, it's very hard. It's the real deal. And I said, man, good luck next year going to North Carolina and Duke and North Carolina State and all these trips they're going to be making across the country because of this crazy realignment. And I don't think he was too excited about that. Z, I was talking to a Stanford grad in Omaha a couple of years ago, and he asked where I went to school, and I said, Harvard of the South. And he was like, Vanderbilt? I said, no, Arkansas. And it's like same curriculum, same tough yeah. academic structure oh, yeah. at, at both schools to this point. Well, yeah. you, you speak about defense, Z. And I, I know Musk was very frustrated after the UNC Greensboro loss about their defense. I was looking up some numbers. Arkansas is ranked in the top 20 in defense last three years. They've been really good. This yeah. year's team is, is taking a little more time on that end. Uh, he's talked about making adjustments. What adjustments do you foresee starting tonight and maybe this week that we haven't seen to this point of the regular season? I think the biggest adjustment he'll make, I think he'll change the lineup a little bit. Okay. Um, at least one guy, maybe two. Um, I do think he's doing that motivation um, to get guys a little bit more inspired on defense. And like L. Ellis is a has become a better defensive player. And he got beat some off the dribble. And he wasn't the only one because those two Langley brothers were, were good players at Greensboro. But, you know, L, and uh, L is, is such a good offensive player. And I think L will tell you, hey, I've, I've had to get a lot better on defense at Arkansas. He's made me. But I do think Coach is going to continue to to try to, you know, get guys maximum potential on, on guarding and – the defense overall is a team helping each other. When one of them gets beat, people rotating. There, there were some times in Greensboro where we got beat, and no one the rotation would be too slow or it wouldn't be at all. And then sometimes Greensboro would do what, what we're talking about. they just kick it out to a wide-open shooter, and they'd knock down a big three. And so uh, I do think there's some scheme stuff on defense he's, he's trying to adjust. But I think he's also trying to get guys motivated, whether it's Debo or L or – 
uh, you know, Tremont's a great defensive player, you know, and, and he's, he's like, Tremont, you got to be better. And so he's, I think he's very motivated um, with getting these guys better. And we need to, you know, we've been blocking shots, but sometimes it's not all about blocking shots. I mean, you got to keep guys in front of you and you got to keep drives off. And really, and rebounding guys is, is something this team's got to get better at. This is not a small Arkansas team. We have big guards, and we've, you know, you got Trevin Brazil, you got Makai, you got, you know, Chandler, and Chandler's been, you know, he's, he's got the, the old Memphis Tigers where he was at for four years. They're roaming around the hotel, same place. That'll be interesting. We end up yeah. playing Memphis in the second game. But, um, you know, we've got guys that are long and big and athletic, and we, we've got to rebound better, and that'll help our defense. Z, we'll get you out of here on this one. This starts an, an incredibly impressive four-game stretch, three games in the Bahamas, then Duke next Wednesday. What do these yeah. four games mean to the season? And from a historical perspective, what do you think the night with Duke may mean to this program long term? Uh, yeah, but, you know, speaking of Duke, the coach said that yesterday in the press conference. about he, he, No one in the country, he didn't feel like he's played tough for four games, but you have to be a little bit careful on that because you watch some of these games on TV. There's some people playing some big-time games. And so, you know, we get to start with Stanford, which is a team that's, you know, picked towards the bottom of, of the Pac-12. So we need to take care of business here and and then move on. And the, the games are tough, as you said. I've got sports rankings in the, you know, I think Carolina's 14, we're 20. You know, <laughs> Memphis is right outside the top 25. You know, but it's not a, it's not a tournament full of all top five and top eight teams. So you know, Arkansas has got a, just as good an opportunity to win this tournament as anybody. But it is a tough four-game stretch. It is a tough stretch. I do like the fact, Tommy, that we're playing Duke game four, and we're not, we're not sitting in Fayetteville right now with a couple bye games. We're playing teams from small leagues, say, uh, tonight or Saturday or Sunday. And our guys are already sitting around thinking about Duke, 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 and they they can't do that here. We've got three, uh, you know, high major games here that we're going to have to play. So there's no time right now. Duke is, you know, next Wednesday. It's already it's already yeah. Wednesday now, so it's coming. But we've got time. But historically, that's a big deal. You know, we have had only four games with Duke. It feels like I've been at all four of them, and it feels like uh, we've played thirty games with Duke because it has such huge, you know national championship implications in, in three of those four games. And the other one was a huge game in the, in the preseason NIT the year after we, uh, months after we played them in the final four and Arkansas beat them in Madison square garden. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. And yeah. of course, last time we played them was a big deal. It was for a final four berth. It's a, it's a big game, but at the end of the day, you know, how much these games will affect March, it, it's hard to say that. You know, it can really help our confidence. It can help our national seed and all that. But at the end of the day, these, these aren't games that are going to hurt you too bad. And looking at this bracket, I, there's a chance you could play North Carolina and Duke in back-to-back games. I mean, <laughs> I know. You know, <laughs> that's I'm pretty, glad that's you pretty said big. That. that is pretty big. And, you know, I thought about that like a couple of months ago when I was looking at it. I was like, I was glad Carolina was on. And to me, the way they did this bracket, you know, they're, they're very nice to the team, so they don't come out and say, hey, Stanford, you're the eighth seed. You know, but I that they, they still see tournaments. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's a reason Arkansas and North, North Carolina aren't playing today, okay? And so the tournament organizers still do a seeding. And uh, we're either the one seed in this deal or we're the two seed, and Carolina's the opposite. And so, uh, you know, based on who Carolina's playing, I think that uh, – they're, they probably were the one seed, and we were the two seed in this thing. Stanford was the 17th seed. And uh, so it's really interesting to me how they seeded this out. But, yeah, we could. it would be awesome to play Carolina. To me, the most fan base I've seen down here is Arkansas and North Carolina uh, as far as fans walking around these hotels and this property in Atlanta. So um, Stanford, unfortunately for them, they just hadn't seen hardly anybody. Remember how in Omaha it was that way. You know, and they do have a fan base. It's just hard. They don't travel as much. I think them guys are all working pretty hard. They're at the Quiz Bowl meet this yeah. weekend, Z. They're not at the school. I'm not saying that. No, yeah. I'll, say I'll say it. I'll say it. Well, Z, we appreciate it, man. I know you got to run. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, guys. Enjoy your families. I'm going to miss my family, but it's nice to be here. But you guys enjoy your families, and 
Appreciate you guys. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.